Today we are going to talk about Antelope Audio. Antelope is an audio interface and studio clock company that is loved by many and also hated by quite a few for many different reasons. I have been an Antelope Audio user for three years at this studio and I've had some good experiences and some bad experiences and Antelope, they've got a few skeletons in their closet. We're going to talk about it and I'm going to tell you what I think you should think about this company and if you should buy their products. So let's get into it. And before we dive into the meat of this video, let me just remind you to like and subscribe. If you haven't done that already, hit the uh, hit the thumbs up button also that helps us get our video in front of more people and we really, really appreciate it. And just as a disclaimer, this is not a sponsored video. Uh, I don't know why it would be because we are gonna talk about some of the good things and some of the bad things about Antelope that I think you should be aware of. And uh, they have never sent me any piece of gear. I've paid for everything of theirs that I have used or do use here in the studio. So this is just gonna be my thoughts to you, the consumer. So if you're thinking about an Antelope audio interface, I just want to let you know some of the things that I love about them, some of the things that I think are a little bit silly, and some of the things that have actually gotten a lot, a lot better. So that's what we're gonna talk about. So first of all, I have used the Antelope Orion 32 HD which is the Pro Tools, the first generation of just the 32 line in and 32 line out Pro Tools HDX compatible interface that they make. So it's a fantastic interface. We bought it three years ago, actually right as Sweetwater was separating from Antelope. We bought this interface from them and we got sort of a pretty good discount. I mean, it was like $3,600, $3,700 new. And I think right out the door, we got it for $2,850, which was, which was great. We replaced our Avid Digidesign Blackline modded FM192. That was kind of the main interface that we had. And then also we had a couple of, first, a few extra channels to get us all the way to 24 by 24. We had some Apogee uh, Rosetta 800s that were connected to the FM192. We had a few channels that were going out on the FM192. And I think we were also using a, a blue Digidesign. So like four interfaces. And this Antelope back here in the rack does the job of those four interfaces in one use. So that was one of the things that was attractive to me. We got it based on the recommendation of a friend. And I think the first sort of negative thing that happened when we got it initially was that it was just a little bit like, the routing system is just, it's a little clunky if you've never used a patch bay. And at the time, you know, I was sort of at the, you know, this was nearly four years ago, oh, definitely over three. I was sort of just, you know, Matt Goldman and I were just partnering up in the space, and I did not have a lot of experience. Before he came, I had no gear and no need for a patch bay other than the the, the interfaces that I had here. And so when he came and, and brought this console that's behind us and the patch bay, that was my first sort of experience with that, and I was just getting used to it. And the Antelope software works very, very similarly, it's laid out very much like a patch bay where you're showing what your your connections, your ins and your outs, where everything is connected to. And so if you've never done that before, I think it's a little bit hard to get used to. I'm definitely very used to it now and I've made it work for me and done a lot of stuff with it over the years, but the Orion interface, I just feel like, and have always felt like, and I think this is one of the complaints of a lot of the other users that I know that have it, is that it could have been a little more intuitive. It wasn't quite as sleek and sexy as the uh, rooting matrix that is in like the RME devices or the uh, the Apollos, and that's just the truth. But as far as sonically, I think that you know if you step away from just some of the, uh, the the basic rooting features of it and sort of the workflow and getting used to that at the beginning, sonically, the thing sounded great. It, ne it never, to me, you know, going from, you know, the first silver Apollo to the FM192, that felt like a big step up in just conversion and quality. And I just really, but I also, you know, I can remember around that time thinking like, 
having the console and all the outboard gear and compressors and things like that. And we changed a lot of the stuff in the room. Like there were too many things that just changed the where overnight it was like the, the recordings that I was making were here. And then Goldman came and within like three months, you know, the recordings that I was making were much better. And so at first it was really easy to think, oh, well, that's because we went from this old, you know, first gen Apollo to the FM 192, which had the, you know, was the black lion thing or whatever. And then, but from the FM 192, there wasn't as big of a jump to the antelope. It was just like, you know, very, very good sounding still. And we've, you know, we've had it for over three years sitting here. And uh, there have been one or two times where we thought about maybe ditching it, getting rid of it for like a Lynx or something like that. But we never pulled the trigger, you know, and kind of the, the spot where I'm in now is like, man, it works. It's connected to all of our stuff. The routing is set up. We never have to fuss with it. We've got a couple of presets saved. And so that was very good. At the time, also, I remember there being probably one of the biggest negative things about Antelope audio was that the uh, this was right when we bought it. It was right before it was maybe a year actually before they um, they got into the AFX to DAW. But they were talking about this AFX to DAW plugin is going to come out. So I remember being very excited about it because when we bought the unit, it came with every plugin that they made at the time, all of the SSL EQs and the 1176s. And so I was really excited about that. And then I remember when AFX to DAW came out, it was only for Thunderbolt. And they had no way that, you know, they were just like, we're not going to release this for the Pro Tools HD interfaces. And so I can remember that feeling a little like a negative just because we felt left out. But the real negative about AFX to DAW came because they advertised it sort of like, it, a lot of people felt like the advertisement made it seem like this was going to be a free upgrade. And when it finally dropped, it was $400. And I think that still lingers in a lot of people's mind because that was a huge, huge burn. You had all these like Thunderbolt interfaces, the Orion Studio 2017, and the Zen Tour interface. And uh, I, th I don't think the Synergy cores were out yet, but the Discrete 8 and the Discrete 4, the original versions of those were out. And so you had all these Thunderbolt interfaces and they were putting out plugins that you could use on the way in with their FPGA processor. And here you're going to get this AFX to dock. Uh, FPGA version, this bridge to use inside of Pro Tools Logic, Cubase, whatever. And the day that it came out, it was 400 bucks. Correct me if I'm wrong on that in the comments below, but I'm pretty sure it was like 400, three, it might've been 299, but I think it was 399. And then they dropped the price to 299 and people just lost it over that. They were very, very mad about that because they felt like that, you know, there was some initial language that made it seem like this was going to be a free thing. Also, around that time, there were, it seemed like a lot of people on the Antelope forum were not only complaining about AFX to DAW and that whole debacle, but it seemed like a lot of people were complaining about their interfaces coming and them not working. And that's never happened to me. Mine's always worked straight away. I've never had any issues with it not firing up or not booting up. Um, people would complain about not getting support. People would complain about trying to do an update. I remember seeing people talking about their interface, you know, asking to do an update and they went ahead and they wanted the software update probably because of a new plugin or something like that. And so they did it and it updated and then they didn't do the update process right and they couldn't get it to connect to their computer. And it did seem like, you know, every other week somebody on the forum was complaining about that. And so then this was the next negative thing that Antelope kind of did was that they had social media folks from their organization come and take over this Facebook forum. And, uh, you know, I think they asked for permission to take it over. And it was like very much a, hey, we're going to really, you know, invest in this community. But then right away, they were just deleting comments. And so people would complain and then their comments would get deleted. Now, Nothing of mine, I never really, I never complained on this forum, but nothing of mine has ever been deleted from that group. So I can't speak from personal experience. It's all hearsay. But I think that if you're going to look at this company, just know that that did happen. There was a period of time where that happened. And people would also talk about that they weren't getting any responses from support. And it just seemed like, man, there's no way in this, in their right mind that anybody would want to buy an interface from this company. They, it just seems like there are too many negative things with the whole AFX to DAW price thing and the whole this thing and that thing. It, it just seemed very overwhelming. But I think that's all changed. I think it's all changed. I really, really do. And here's why. So 
I've seen some of their new plugins coming out and I saw that they had a new desktop interface. And because I've had this one here for three years, I've been setting up a little small rig at home where I could take some work home in the evening, not have to come back to the studio, even though I only live a couple of miles away from here, not have to come back across town, be here. Instead, I could be at home, mix at home, edit from home, whatever. And so I just decided that I was gonna buy an interface for my house and I saw that they had this right here. See if I can get that in the light. There we go. That is the new ZenQ Synergy Core. So, and they've got a promotion going. You get a bunch of cool plugins with it. It's got guitar input jacks and headphone input jacks on the front of it. It's bus powered, so I can plug it into my MacBook, take it with me anywhere, and I've got the same converters that I've got sitting back here for my headphones. They, they say it's their mastering grade converters and clocking. And so that was very appealing to me, and I was just like, you know what, I'm just gonna take a chance on this. So I had an Apollo, and honestly, the Apollo, the one thing about the Apollo is that it's not like this is a huge deal, but it's a little cumbersome to take with you because you gotta have a power supply, uh, and this is bus powered off of the Thunderbolt bus, uh, which is awesome. So if you've got a Thunderbolt 3 Mac that uh, you know has the has the, the that Thunderbolt 3, the flat looking USB-C type cable that carries power with it. And so you can power these off of that cable. Um, and that's just super convenient to literally just have my laptop and have one cord go into this and plug my headphones into it. And I can work for an hour or two off of the laptop's battery. No big deal. That was appealing. Also just wanting to play guitar at home, but not have to take, you know, everything I've got here is just big heads and four by 12 cabinets and uh, wanting to be able to play some electric guitars at home or maybe even lay down an idea. You know, that's not that possible. And I could have done that in the Apollo, but just the fact that, again, this is bus powered and I can hook it up to the laptop, it just seemed like, man, this is just really cool. I really want to try this out. You know, I've been using this company here for three years. I'm going to try it out. So I get an interface and this is where I think the story starts to get really, really good and why you should reconsider Antelope. If maybe you had one of these bad experiences that I'm talking about in the past, I think the truth is, is that Antelope has changed and they are a great company because I got the interface and I actually bought a B-Stock one from Vintage King and it came and there was a problem with a uh, with chip on it. I went and called support. This is another thing that was negative about Antelope. In the past, people would say, I can never get a hold of support. I had no problem. It was Nine o'clock at night, Eastern time. I think they're open till 11 o'clock Eastern time. Might be 10. And they're only closed for three hours and they open back up at 1 a.m. And I called them at like eight, nine o'clock at night and somebody picked up. I mean, it literally only took me like five minutes. Took me no time at all. Got a hold of support and they helped me figure out that uh, it was actually one of the units. They have a couple with some earlier versions of this certain chip, I guess. I don't really understand what's all going on in that, but they were recalled and Vintage King actually sold me a B stock one that was from that run, you know, that just got, got missed. And Vintage King didn't even have to step in. Antelope just said, hey, we'll take care of it. We're gonna send you a brand new one. And because I bought a B-Stock one, I technically didn't qualify for their current plug-in promotion, which has the Blonder Tongue and the like 176 compressor and the Auto-Tune Synergy and a bunch of other like, you know, it'd be like $1,600 worth of plugins or something like that, that they're adding on right now if you buy a brand new one. And since even though I bought a B-Stock one from Vintage King, Antelope returned, they sent me a shipping label, didn't have to pay for shipping. Nothing, I just put it back in the box from Vintage King, slapped the label on it, sent it out, and four days later, this brand new one showed up at the studio, and they transferred all the plugins that uh, would come with a brand new one into my account, put it onto this device, and you know, within 20 minutes of getting the new one, everything worked as, as it was supposed to, and uh, it was great. So I will say, I did have to call support maybe once or twice, but, you know, it was easy. I got a hold of them and they walked me through the process to get everything set up and to load the driver properly with, with Big Sur, which was a little bit different, I think, than what the directions had said. So that was super easy. Um, and also that's another thing. And I just want to touch on this, like support is really there to help you. They came in and they did screen sharing with me. And they also did that actually one of the things that made me go and look at this interface to begin with, I know I'm sort of like dancing all around, but uh, when I was sort of on the fence and looking at this interface to begin with, is I was actually having, um, I was actually having this weird Pro Tools issue that Avid said was probably part of my cable, but to call 
my, my DigiLink cable that goes from the HDX card to the Antelope. But they said call Antelope and see if they have any ideas. So I walked through the whole thing with the tech. This was again like nine o'clock at night. I called support thinking there's no way. I'm just gonna leave a message and just not get to work to the rest of tonight. Called support, support picked up. They did screen sharing with me. It took them like a half an hour and we fixed the issue over the phone. And it was awesome. So what I'm saying is, is that I think all of this stuff from the past is gone. The other thing that's cool is that uh, these come with the AFX to DAW plugin now. So when you get these and you get all the plugins, you can use them inside your DAW. You can either track through them on the way in, which is the way the device is designed to work, or you can actually pull them up as plugins in your DAW and use the onboard DSP. AFX to DAW, it does have a value ascribed to it on the website, and that is, I think $200 now, so the price is dropped, but it comes, if you buy this, you register it, you get the AFX to DAW for free right now. So I think that's maybe part of their current promotion, but they have a literally, they're, they're sort of like waves. They've got a promotion going on all the time. So to summarize, if you go and you look for this information on the internet, what I've talked about this video, you will find it. There is stuff still lingering out there that are going to be people saying things that are sort of negative about this company. And if you're like me, that will make you skeptical and you'll say, gosh, I don't know if I should do this or not. Uh, but then if you're also like me, you get too curious and there are features and things that you think that you want. And so you just go ahead and you buy it anyways because you like buying gear, which is exactly what I did. And I rolled the dice and probably spent more time than I should have working on it, but that's neither here nor there. And it came out great because they were super, super helpful. <laughs> So I think this company has changed and I think they're really worth giving a look to. I'm very happy that I got this interface. I think that it sounds great. It's super easy to use for me and for the way that I work. I think it's actually more convenient than the Apollo Twin that I had. Uh, it's got an extra headphone output and it has um, more, uh, no, it has the same number of IO on the back as the Twin. So I just had the base model Twin. So, so super good. Uh, and that's not saying anything negative about UAD or anything like that. I'm I'm a self-professed gear whore. I like to trade things around and switch things out, and I probably shouldn't, but I wanted to take a look at this. I think Antelope's a great company. I think the build quality is immense. We're going to be doing more stuff from them on this channel. You should definitely, definitely check them out. They are worth looking into. They're I can't say enough good things about my experience the past two weeks. This company has definitely changed and they are definitely hungry and working towards making their customers happy. I'm happy. I think the support that I got was great. And if you're thinking about getting an Antelope audio interface and you found this video, then I think that you should look into it. All right, I've been Matt. I've talked way too long. This is Capsule Cone. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.